associate professor at Institute of English Language and Literature, University of Sin. The topic he's going to cover today is communicative language teaching and learning. And this is the topic which is very close to the heart of Sir Abdul Hamid Kavar. So, sir, I'm very grateful that you spared time for joining us at the platform of UPDCI from your busy schedule. Now, over to you. You are on mute, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir, we all can okay. hear you. That's fine. Oh, thank you so much, Ms. Ina. Actually, uh, I don't deserve that much appreciation. Uh, I still consider myself a student, uh, and these platforms really help me to learn a lot from people, from myself, from my experience, because when I teach, I learn. And in this case, this uh, approach that I'm going to uh, share with you, discuss with you, because we'll be discussing here, I actually would like uh, to make this session more interactive. Uh, by asking questions from you and understanding the things, your perspective and my perspective. So let's see, uh, I'm going to share the screen and then uh, we'll start our session without wasting any time. So can you see the screen now? Hina, uh, uh, can you see the- uh, Yes, PPT? sir. Yes. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Perfectly so, visible. Oh, we are going to start with, you know, understanding what is this thing? Okay? What is communicative language teaching? Okay? So let's first try to understand it. And I'm going to share nine statements with you people. I don't, I think we have 74 participants here. So just spare some time, let's say five to six minutes, uh, read these statements. And you have to tell me which one of them are not directly connected to CLT or communicative language teaching and learning. So just spend five minutes, just, just read them. I will wait for your response. You can uh, respond in chat room okay? and I'll check them. Just tell me the statements which are not related to CLT, not all the statements, just the numbers. Uh, you, you can say number one is not related or number nine is not related to CLT. So I'll check them in the uh, chat room and see how much you understand about this. Okay, so your time starts now. Okay, one response is comes. So it says number seven. Okay, good. So it's not related to CLT, you think so? Okay, good. Mariam Khan says this. Okay, we've got another response, Nihal Fatma, and she says second is not related. And then we have other responses, five, eight, and nine, and six. Good, very good. Five is not related. So it's just, you know, we'll try to understand what is actually not connected. I just wanted to know how much you know about it. Number four is also not okay. Good. Good, good. Seven, six, two, six, and seven, fine. Great. I think uh, that's really to, you know, I, I actually believe that uh, we learn by uh, making mistakes okay, and uh, asking people and sharing the things. So you are sharing, and then, of course, and then we'll discuss what is right, what is directly related to these things. So it's, it's actually, you are thinking now, no? So when you are looking at the things, reading them and thinking, you are actually using your cognitive uh, thinking powers, okay? So cognitive powers actually uh, enhance your mental developments. 
And this is where, you know, CLT is. CLT actually wants uh, that teacher should, uh, you know, be on the side okay? and let the students think and discuss. Okay. Seven one is a lot there. Okay. A lot of people say seven is not related. Okay. Okay, let's move further. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, like you, uh, I actually, I, I have, you know, I'm very happy that you are responding, and there are so many things here. Okay. So we'll try to see what actually CLT is, and then uh, your <clears throat> your responses actually have given me a lot of uh, things to discuss and see that. Okay, so there are certain misconceptions about CLT. I think the main misconception, because I've been teaching that uh, in my classrooms, the main uh, you know misconception is that. CLT is actually related to speaking skill only. Because when we say communication, people think that communication means speaking. So there's a main misconception in CLT. Communication is not only done through speaking. It can be done through writing also. And when there's no listening, how can you communicate? If you are talking to a deaf person, are you, do you think you are communicating? Okay, so listening is also part of the communication. So all the four skills are important for the communicative language teaching. Okay, okay so when we uh, like look at these statements, uh, 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 first statement says people learn a language based when using it to do things rather than through studying how language works and practicing it, practicing rules. Okay, so. This really directly related to CLT because CLT actually, uh, uh, you know, focuses on uh, practicing. It's focusing on using language, not teaching, like teaching in a traditional way, like teacher should come and teach you what is noun, what is pronoun, and the sentence structure. And mostly we use GTM, grammar, grammar translation method. So it actually rejects that. It actually says, that let students practice it, okay? But does not mean there's no role of grammar in it, okay? There's no role of uh, form and function in it, okay? So they, they are also important. So when we come to two, grammar is no longer important in language teaching and learning when we, talk, we are talking about communicative language teaching. That is not correct, okay? because CLT includes that. CLT's focus is that linguistic competence should be also there. Like uh, students should know, because when we are teaching, especially if we are talking about target language or uh, second language, when you don't know about the grammar, I don't think so you can learn uh, the second language. Yeah? So it should be there. It, it doesn't reject it. CLT doesn't reject teaching of grammar, but that grammar also should be taught communicatively. This, this what actually is the problem here, that we are teaching the grammar without the context, without communication, without the real life situation, giving the students real life situation. Okay? So that's the issue, okay? But the grammar is important for CLT. So two is also, uh, like two is uh, like, is not uh, directly related to CLT. Grammar is important, I would say, okay? It is important. So I would say, you can say that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, okay. This. Okay, now if we move to the third, people learn language through communicating in it. This directly related, of course, okay. Teaching grammar is also related to uh, language, okay. Okay, CLT is only concerned with teaching speaking skill. Okay. So that is misconception. I think I've already told you that is mis misconception and we should remove it. It's not 
related only to teach speaking skills. Yeah. So communication doesn't mean that only you communicate through speaking. Like you write the letters when you are, you know, in a certain office, you write the letters. Why do write? Why do you write it? You are communicating through these letters. Yeah? You write applications. You come. You are communicating through this. So it's not that only speaking is the part of communicative language teaching. So you should be when we say communicative language teaching, you should be good uh, at all the four skills of language. Okay? So you know about all the four skills of language. So uh, I, I, I don't think so. I am going to enumerate them here. Okay, then four errors are not important in speaking a language. Okay, so that is some like my student said, okay, that's not part of, uh, because uh, that, that is related to communication, uh, communicative language teaching. Because in when we are using uh, CLT, we don't care about errors, but that is a misconception. If you are not caring about the errors of the student, what are you teaching them? How are you asking them to improve them? Okay. It actually means that you should not discourage students. CLT says, error, let the students make errors. Do not discourage them, but then correct them. Give them feedback. Give them, uh, tell them that you are not right here. Okay. So this can be better in this way. Okay? So they should know about their errors. It does not mean that when you are using CLT, they shouldn't know about their errors. So that is actually a misconception here. And then I, I think I've already told you CLT is only concerned with the speaking skills. That is again misconception. Classroom activities should be meaningful. Okay, so somebody said six is not related to CLT, but it is related. Okay, when I say meaningful, because I have, uh, uh, you know, highlighted these some terms, could you like, just take one minute and tell me the meaning of meaningful here. What actually the writer, because this is taken from Jack Richards' book, what actually he means that uh, classroom activities should be meaningful. What actually he means, just take one minute and give me some feedback on this in the chat room. What actually he means when he says they should be meaningful. Purposeful, fruitful, purposeful regarding communications. Okay, students context related, good. This great. Mm -hmm. It should be relevant to her. Okay, good. Okay, I think uh, uh, I quite agree with uh, Mariam. Okay. So when we say meaningful, it actually here, it, it does not mean, you know, the things, uh, I think you know that meaning, when you want to see the meaning of the words, you have to understand the context. If you don't understand the context, you cannot understand the meaning. So here meaningful means of the context based, related to your context, related to your situation, or uh, we can, in other words, say real life communication. Yeah. that is quite related to your own life where you can you practice your language where you uh, converse uh, converse with the people when you talk to the people so the activity should be designed in the way that they actually should re reflect a student's real life situation yeah. so that is what we call is meaningful here it means it should be context related it should be context oriented it should be very much contextual Okay, and then seventh one, many of you say that's not related to that, but I'm really sorry because they are the main parts. Dialogues are the main parts in the CLT. They are directly related to CLT. So I think it's, it's wrong here. Uh, when we talk about CLT, role plays and these kind of activities are the basic activities of CLT metrics. Okay. So in CLT, uh, you know, teaching or uh, CLT methods or activities, students are encouraged to speak. They are given the dialogues, they are given the situations, and they are asked to practice in those situations. Like uh, 
you you are asked uh, like for example uh, one of you is the shopkeeper and one of you is the uh, customer so how would you communicate that is part because you are giving them a real situation a real life situation and dialogues are directly related to real life situations okay and they are directly related to this term meaningful so they are the part of clt so that is not uh, you know that's not correct here we cannot say the dialogues are not part of the CLT, they are very much part of CLT. Okay, when we uh, come to both accuracy and fluency are goals in CLT. Okay, so uh, do you think that's right? Many, uh, I think that's right. Okay, so when we say, I think I've already talked about that, uh, you should be also good at, uh, you know, farm, at uh, the structure of the language. So it's related to this accuracy. Your like your structure should be uh, that accurate that other people can understand you. If it's not accurate, the people won't be able to understand you because you are not speaking accurately. Okay? So accuracy is also part of the uh, you know CLD, and it's directly related to the form and uh, structure of the language. And we can say grammar. Okay? As I already told you that grammar is also important. So if you want to be accurate in a certain language, you need to know about the grammar of the language. You need to know about the rules of the language. If you don't know about the rules of the language, you cannot speak that language. Uh, mother tongue is something different, but here we are actually talking about second language, uh, our target language, whatever you call it. Yeah. Coming to fluency, this again related to communication or speaking, where you should be fluent enough to convey your message. And that cannot be uh, like to me, if you are uh, uh, you know, studying a second language or some foreign language, you need to be accurate. You need to be uh, fluent in that. Yeah? So they, they are the part of CLT. And I think we'll further, uh, I would further describe them. I have other slide that would clearly describe what is accuracy and fluency afterward that okay then coming to the ninth one clt is usually described as a method of teaching okay uh, do you think it's a method because many of us believe that clt is a method if it's method just say yes and if you think it's not a method then what is it can you just just spend 30 seconds uh i think we i have so many things to say okay good good you know about it, yes. So it's not a method, it's an approach, okay? So you know about this, very good, okay? So CLT is not a method, it is an approach, okay? So I think I'm going to also describe and discuss that, what is method and what is approach, okay? Um, maybe I have some other thing to tell you, but methods come from approach, okay? And then, when we have the methods, after that, methods actually uh, contain activities. So approach is the main, uh, I would say, I would just briefly tell you, it's more theoretical. It more, you know, tells you about what is something and how it should be uh, taught, like communicative teaching as approach, it would tell you that that class should be student center, and then teacher should be facilitator, but then it is not telling you what method you should use, okay? Okay. The methods then you devise later that this method, like audio lingual method can be very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, related to communicative language teaching. So they are the methods. Methods are actually processes. And that how you implement, uh, how you implement your lesson plan, how you uh, teach something in your classroom. So you have to use certain methods. I would say lecturing is method, it's not approach. Yeah? So lecturing is method and it's most related to the GTM, okay? like uh, comes from traditional approach. I would say it comes from traditional approach. So you are right, uh, it's, it's an approach, it's not a method. Okay, now moving to the second slide. Okay, so I think I've already told you that it is an approach to achieve communicative competence by promoting active student participation in meaningful and authentic activities. Okay, uh, okay. so teachers 
encourage a balance when i said clt is not only uh, function like focusing on the functions functional aspect of language it actually includes all these forms okay it all these components like a, a form function fluency and accuracy okay so uh, when you say you are uh, uh, a farm is necessary because farm can be anything uh, uh, like it can be your novel can be your presentation so farm should be there so without farm i think uh, uh, like i'm speaking here i'm giving a presentation so i have some farm here okay and the ways i am using they can be functional they can be traditional whatever so farm is necessary so it doesn't say there shouldn't be farm if there's no farm you are not organized okay? farm is related to the organization to the structure that what are you actually talking about what are you using to express your views like some people they express their views through poetry some they express their views through novels some they express their views through speech okay? so what is the speech that is farm what is presentation that is farm so farm is necessary and then function what is the function of that okay? and then fluency and accuracy okay so let's let's see what i have to tell you uh, uh, more about these things uh, so i think let's let's see how uh, what is the difference what is the difference between fluency and uh, you know activities okay? so fluency is more natural okay and related to your communications and meaningful use of language okay so when i say meaningful you should keep the meaning that i've told you uh, earlier that it does not mean that you know meaningful something purposeful it actually means something related to real life communication something related to contextual uh, communication context based communication okay? so uh, require the use of uh, communication strategies produce language that may not be predictable seek to link language used us to the context so that is fluency okay like more related to communication in a natural way okay but how can you come in when you are we are talking about second language or foreign language how can you be natural when you don't know about the structure okay so accuracy comes to then then talks about the structure okay form correct language practice okay so that is uh, reflect on classroom use of language okay so when we say classroom use of language that is not directly related to real life communication okay focus on the formation of correct examples of language practice of language out of the context okay so that can be also done like when you are in a classroom it's, it does not mean that you all the time you will be using real life uh, uh, communication sometimes uh, in CLT, when you are going to teach the students about the structure of certain language, you also need to give the lecture. Okay? You also, uh, teacher also needs to talk. Okay? So when teacher is talking, it is not very much real life communication. So it means that we cannot say that uh, this communicative language teaching is only, uh, you know, focusing on fluency. It only focuses on fluency, but also the accuracy, like the structure of language should be. I won't be spending a lot of time on this. So I think you are clear with uh, these two terms. If you have anything, if you're not clear, uh, we'll be discussing that in the questions. Okay, now these are some questions that actually I wanted to ask from you. What is the role of the teacher in CLT and what is the role of the learner in the CLT? So can you just write um, the, just, one role of the teacher and one role of the learner that actually encompasses all the things okay just take some okay let's say one minute then okay? so in the chat room share what is the role of teacher in clt the major role okay the dominant role when we say major in the dominant role it does not mean that there's no other role or teacher cannot be teacher centered okay? but then dominant role okay good teacher is a facilitator this great and how about the student okay determining and responding to learn a language needs okay that's the role of teacher yes good. 
okay so teacher should be facilitator supporter and a guide good facilitator and advice okay good so that's uh, enough for the teacher's role now let's just share something about student's role a learner's role in C cl Okay. Receiver and observer. So passive receiver or active receiver. Active participant. Good. Good. Yes. Okay. Good. <clears throat> so learner is an active participant so that's that's great okay, okay when you say active learner what do you actually mean by that uh, i think it's uh, china and some other people have also said active learner. Okay, good. Have you ever thought of, uh, like nowadays there's very clear, uh, you know, I, I'll move to this slide, but then uh, it's, a, it's very common that, uh, learners should be autonomous yeah? should be independent not the dependent so that's what clt actually promotes it actually promotes that learners should take responsibility of their learning they should be independent learners so that is the main role okay but the teacher's main role is facilitator of course uh, i actually believe that okay so the is uh, this is a teacher's role here okay so teacher is a facilitator that is the main role okay of interactive classroom practice and a guide to new ideas okay so just a facilitator okay? in a traditional uh, farm in a traditional approach uh, we can say teacher is a dominant is a authoritative and he's everything okay? so he knows everything he uh, teaches in a traditional way when we say he teaches so uh, he is like a sage on the stage he knows everything okay and learners they are just a passive listener listener to the teacher so that is traditional okay in the clt the teacher is facilitator just provides resources to the students guides them gives them activities and uh, is there is the you know he's present there to you know help them sometimes they need the help okay? just facilitates them okay? gives them a classroom ask them uh, give them uh, you know resources ask them to use the board if they like it so he's just facilitating the students okay? he's not teaching them he's not actually saying that he's not uh, like in a traditional way we can say teaching he's not imposing his ideas on the students uh, that is what is happens in a traditional classroom that teachers they come and they impose their ideas okay so no questions no uh, uh, uh you know independence of the learners okay so i think we have already talked about this balance of activities fluency accuracy function form so okay so and then this is important because that is also my field learnings cooperative collaborative and negotiative okay that is in the clt clt actually promotes club uh, cooperation it, it it actually promotes collaboration it actually promotes negotiations okay it does and and when we i think uh, when we say negotiation uh, i always tell the students that when we we are talking about educations and language and social sciences there's no one answer to the things okay you cannot say that this is final answer and this is the you know it, it can be in the science it can be in the mathematics there can be one answer but in education and in, in linguistics and language and these they, uh, there's no one answer so uh, there should be negotiation there 
then like we should agree what actually the majority thinks. Okay, so that is where you negotiate. Okay, it does not mean the teacher is right. In traditional approach, teacher says I'm right. So whatever teacher says, that's final. That is like you, the students they lock it, and they say it's final. Okay, so it's not final. In in uh, the best teacher to me is that actually does not impose his ideas. Okay? The best teacher is the one that only facilitates, it, it only, you know, you know, starts the conversation, start the discussions and listens to the students and come, they all together, like all the students, the teacher, they come to kind of negotiation, kind of some agreement. Okay? Like if there's some kind of topic, like mar arranged marriages, I'm just giving the examples, arranged marriages are better or the love marriage is better. So, uh, you have to listen to the students and then come to final negotiation. You, you, you are not going to impose that this one is better, okay? So that is, that shouldn't be there, okay? And there should be cooperation. Like uh, I would, I, I still say that uh, cooperation actually means a teacher should avoid uh, using, like making, uh, creating kind of competitive situation with students. When you create competition, you know, it brings in a kind of enmity in the students, a kind of, you know, uh, you know, the student, they, they don't share openly. In competition, the students hide the things. They don't share. But if you are creating a cooperative environment there, they would be sharing the things, okay? And they would be learning. And the students should know, they, sh they need to know that by sharing, they are actually not actually decreasing their knowledge, but they are actually increasing the knowledge. Yeah. I won't go in detail, because I always ask students, there are two things mostly, because this is what my question is there. Two things increase when you share them. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm actually not going to uh, uh, waste your time. The first one is happiness. When you share your happiness, it increases. Yeah. And the second one is knowledge. When you share the knowledge, when you share your ideas, they actually increase, they don't decrease. Okay? So never think that you are sharing the ideas and they would decrease, or you would be giving your idea to somebody. When you are sharing, you are actually consolidating your ideas. You are actually uh, internalizing your idea. So uh, that's very much related to Vygotsky's theory. Uh, I, maybe I would get some chance to talk on that because that's also my area. So cooperation and collaboration, group work, they are the main you know, activities, the main uh, uh, things that you use in communicative language teaching. Okay, students actively uh, act, uh, participate in a wide range of meaningful real world uh, you know, activities. So that is actually, uh, uh, I think we've already discussed that in CLT, the teachers mostly uh, kind of you know give the activity that are related to real life like role plays okay? or even a group work they ask them to work in a way that they they are not in the classrooms they are outside as they talk to their friend they discuss with their friends okay so uh, just let the student forget because you know uh, you know about acquisition and learning okay so acquisition they say is better because uh, you are you acquire the things in a better way and quickly. Why? Because it's done in a natural setting. Okay? And learning is something that is very much artificial. Okay? So that actually is not uh, very, so uh, the research studies, they also say that classrooms, try to make the classrooms as much natural as you can. Okay? So that the student shouldn't feel that they are in the classroom, but they are somewhere in a natural setting. So that is very important for that. But again, I would say you cannot make a classroom a hundred personal and natural thing, okay? And it cannot be because if you do, then it can be mess again, okay? Okay, so uh, communicative competence, I think you, there are some, when we say communicative competence, it actually means that you should be good at grammar also. You should be good at fluency. You should be good at how to how you converse with the people, how you talk to the people, and how what strategies you use, okay, and who you are talking to. That is very important because uh, uh, you, if you are talking to your father, you would not be using the same language that you are using with your friend. Okay? 
So that also is the, a part of the communicative competence. You should be competent enough to know that what, who you are talking to and what language you should be using. Okay? So uh, uh, there are several roles, uh, uh, like he's a director, he's in charge, he's a manager, okay? but then most important is facilitator. Okay? Because sometimes te uh, teacher is controller also. Because when he or uh, she feels that now the class is going to be rowdy and it's, it's going to be very noisy. And uh, so the teacher then has to use the power. Okay? So should, his teacher should be friendly, but not a friend. That's what communicative language teaching says. Okay, so that's the main role of the teacher, okay, as a facilitator. So uh, instead of focusing on providing opportunities, okay, uh, so the teachers shouldn't be actually spending a lot of time on uh, lecturing and giving the presentations, but should provide the opportunities for students to engage in a communicative activity that practice comprehension and production, focusing on language forms, how those forms are used in a range of authentic contexts, helping the students to practice both accurate and fluent language, guiding. So I think we have already discussed there are so many other things that you actually need to know. Okay. Okay, so meaningful communication is already done. So give them some situation that is directly related to their real life situation. Okay? And uh, I think I will also tell you what is authentic because that is again a very new thing in communicative language teaching. When I ask students what is authentic material or authentic communication, uh, they also you know get lost. Okay, okay. So we, uh, we have already discussed this. I'm not going to give you a detailed talk on this. Okay. So meaningful communication is the uh, is the content that is relevant related to the real life context oriented oriented. Okay, but it should be related to you know real life situation. Okay, not uh, we can not say that purposeful in in a in an artificial way. Okay, so the main thing is that real life should be there. Okay, so this is one example uh, about the meaningful communication. Okay, so like what what happens in a traditional classrooms when we are teaching them prepositions, we actually give them you know, separate sentences, they are not related to any context, okay? Like if we are teaching them on, how to use on, how to use in, where to use. So we just give them a sentence that is not related, that is out of the context, okay? And we are, tell the student to fill in the blanks, okay? So when there's no context, it becomes very difficult because there's not real life situation, okay? So real life situation, give them some map of some area okay, that they know. Okay, and then ask them, uh, give them blanks and ask them to fill in the blanks. Okay, so in order to practice the use of preposition to describe the location of places, the students might be given a street map with a various buildings identified in different locations. They are given a list of prepositions such as, so this is a kind of real life situation you are giving them. Okay, you are not giving them that uh, uh, this is across from and these are the preposition and these are the sentences that Okay, Ahmad is going there and Ahmad give them a blank and then, so that is out of context. That sentence is not related. If you are giving them a map, that is a real life map. So the students would think about that because they have been there in the, that place or the map is there. So that would be describing the place. So, so this, uh, like this is on the corner or this is near or this next to, so that would be very clear because buildings are there. So the student actually would be guessing from the real life situation. Okay, so these are some, you know, uh, very common components of uh, communicative language teaching uh, because it, it says, because see, these two people, Kinal and Soen, they actually have given us four components that are actually related to communicative uh, competence. That is part of communicative language teaching. So what is communicative competence? Okay? They say that uh, it's a grammatical uh, and it's social linguistic is discourse and it's strategic. Yeah? So I think grammatical, you know that you should also be good because we have already talked that CAT never discards grammar. It actually says grammar should be there. Okay, and then other thing is that uh, uh, when we say communicative competence, students should be competent enough to, uh, you know, to recognize the context. What is the context? 
who they are talking to which situation they are in and because uh, language the same language cannot be used everywhere and we know that in our mother tongue you cannot use the same language that you are talking to your friend and the same language with your boss okay? so how you justify there you have to be very much uh, you know expert in a social linguistic competence like where you know that what is uh, uh, you know social environment who you are talking to and so that that is uh, uh, what happens when the student when they start you know learning language initially they they talk the words and they speak uh, generally like they don't differentiate who they are talking to okay so even that they ask the teacher what is your name okay you cannot ask teacher what is your name okay that is very rude that is not polite okay or you cannot even ask your boss where are you going okay, okay. so like you have to be very you know uh, competent enough to uh, device your language accordingly like if you are asking your boss where are you going you can that's very rude so you can say sir may i ask you uh, where are you going or something like that okay uh, if you uh, uh, could, uh, could, uh, would you please tell me okay could you please tell me where you are going so these are the you know this is how you actually uh, decide that who you are talking to so this this competence is also part of communicative language teaching that you should be also competent uh, you know in social linguistics okay and then discourse uh, that is again a competence that is discourse competence so what happens you should also know how to use uh, you know it's mostly related to uh, discourse markers uh, some conjunctions okay some cohesive devices you should know how to use them okay if you are using them you are actually guiding the uh, listener if you are not using them you are actually confusing the uh, so uh, when we say discourse uh, competence it actually means you should be expert in using however in using uh, similarly in using although in using you know nonetheless because they actually tell the reader what actually you are talking about you are talking about the similar things so you would say similarly okay but if you are moving to the things that are opposite that you have already talked so instead of using a discourse marker like however uh, nonetheless and you are moving to the opposite point that that would uh, that that suggests that you are not uh, uh, you don't possess discourse competence so so you should be able to use discourse markers or cohesive devices very uh, expert now uh, strategic competence that is also you know very important uh, actually i have written here for, because that is sometimes very confusing for the uh, students okay it actually uh, refers to a, a kind of an ability to repair your miscommunications okay sometime you say something but then you think okay you have said something wrong okay so you should be quite uh, you know uh, competent to repair it to go back to the real one okay so sometimes the presentation you sometimes divert okay but then now you realize no you have diverted so just come to the points and then you can use certain words and sentences okay that can repair it okay so that that is related to that that how you can do it okay okay and then these are uh, like they were the concept by given by swain and then these are the concept given by richards because i actually follow them so he says uh, when we say communicative competence because that is the main part of communicative language teaching okay? uh, i think we have short of time knowing how to use language for a range of different purposes and functions and knowing how to vary our use of language according to the setting and participants that i have already told you that uh, who you are talking to and why you are talking to okay and knowing how to produce and understand different types of text okay? so that is related to you know farm directly related to the farm because farm is also part of so whether you are using a uh, speech you are using report or interviews or conversation so that is the farm knowing how to maintain communication despite having limitation in one language knowledge so that is again uh, you should know that uh, what different strategy you can use sometime code switching also is the part of strategic competence okay so if you know any word if you don't know any word in english okay 
then you can use your own mother tongue or language say that okay so that is again comes in the strategic competence okay okay now we are coming to the learners role okay and that is the main thing that at least uh, communicative language teaching uh, promotes that clt the learner is autonomous learners independent do not make him dependent do not make him you know somebody that actually totally depends on the teacher and uh, like traditional uh, classroom setting whatever teacher said they actually believe they are passive listener okay so learner's role is quite active you are right okay the learner is autonomous and then takes the responsibility of his or her learning okay? because they are learners they are asked that they are the learners and they have to take response it does not mean the teacher shouldn't be there the teacher is there to guide them to facilitate them to even to answer their question sometimes a teacher can escape fault okay? so it does not mean that teacher is not actually there teacher teaches them but mostly the clt actually promotes that let the learners be independent okay let them learn let them you know say the things write the things do the things and then give them feedback because that is the better way instead of just talking to them and explaining the things and then going back so language when we say language is better that you should practice it okay so uh, learners should be independent should take the responsibility of this learner they should develop the skill and then confidence and motivation so how it is developed because when they are autonomous yeah. mostly in traditional classrooms learners they are very shy they lack confidence why because they don't talk they don't share you don't give them opportunity to share so how are you expecting them to be a confident they can be confident because when you tell them that you are going to take responsibility of your learning you are the main uh, stakeholder here and then they get confidence and you listen to them you uh, that and then what happens uh, that is quite very uh, common in co cooperative learning that uh, this is quite natural i think maybe it's not uh, with everybody but many students they, they cannot speak they can speak to their friends very uh, you know fluently even in, in in target language even in english but when it comes to teacher or somebody that is you know uh, respectable for him uh, they, they they cannot speak fluently and they lack confidence there they their confidence decreases there so how can you you know enhance that that can be step by step and then that is that you let this learners take responsibility of their learning share it with their friend and then slowly step by step they should come to the teacher and then they start sharing so if they become habitual of sharing with their friend and then the day would come they would be sharing it with their uh, uh, teachers and then uh, the people they are shy with them so it actually promotes uh, learning autonomy and collaborative learning and cooperative learning they actually their main aim is that the, the learner should be at the center not the teacher but the uh, learner okay uh, how much time we have 10 minutes okay there are again some uh, other things about the learner autonomy okay so what learners do when they are autonomous okay so they identify the needs what they need okay but they, you should we should involve the students in teaching learning processes so we can ask them that you know what what they like what they don't like okay? so we should identify the needs but then through them okay and you you can ask them to plan the things like we have uh, activities like project based le learning and these so there they plan the things they set the goals okay they select the resources you can ask them go and select select the books okay that that are very much related to your uh, you know subject okay and then you can ask them what activities they like most okay so they can select the activities okay you, you can ask them practice it and then your role with the only monitoring but then also the learners can monitor they can monitor other people like you can uh, you know how can you uh, monitor like how you can ask this learner monitor okay uh, because a cooperative learning suggests different roles for the learners and that these roles can be rotating 
Yeah? It's not that uh, like you are using group work in one class, so you can keep one learner uh, leader or skipper in the group. Yeah? Other learners can be, one of them can be the timekeeper and one of them can be the writer, one of them can be the speaker. Okay? So, and then you can, uh, uh, you know, rotate these roles. Like every time the leader cannot be the same. So you, the next class, the other person can be the leader. Okay? So the leader can be monitoring the progress. Okay? So you are actually giving them this role also to monitor their progress and assessment and revision. Okay? So how is assessment? You know, uh, CLT also promotes uh, this peer review. You have you heard about this term, peer reviewing? Okay? So let the students check one another's work. Okay? It's not that they can be perfect all the time, but then this actually is the one step to the development. Okay? So if they, you know, look at their uh, like one another's work and then, tell them, give them feedback, they've been, they, you are actually training them, you are actually making them autonomous. And if it becomes routine, uh, I would say that the, the day would come, they would be like teachers. Uh, I think, uh, uh, I have to finish by nine. Yes, sir. we'll be finishing by 10. So by now we have only six minutes and I have two very important questions. Okay, I actually one, wanted to show, uh, tell them one thing about authentic, but then, okay, maybe I'll continue. But uh, this is a picture that I actually wanted to show them, okay? okay? So do you think CLT promotes equality? No, equity. Yeah, so you know about it, okay? So there should be equity, like uh, uh, I just talked about scaffolding, okay? So CLT also promotes, that the teachers has uh, this should take this responsibility. If they find that some learner they are lagging behind, he should help them. He should scaffold them. Okay. So scaffolding it does not mean that should always come from teacher side. It can come from their own friends. The, the some friend they know more. They can be more able peers, so they can help their friends. So it should be equity because you are not actually saying that okay uh, the same instruction for everyone the same work for everyone. So no help for the people who actually need it more. So that is again the part of CLT. So I think I would stop here and then she has some questions. I would answer them. What are you fresher, sir? Sorry? I mean, what are you fresher? This talk was very refreshing for the mm -hmm. teachers because mm -hmm. it is re-energizing. And we understand that the learning disabilities which were discussed by Dr. Rathir, many of them can be addressed by CLT. So kind of good coherence in both the topics. Thank sir, so first much. question is, how can we increase our confidence level in front of people who speak or perform better than us? Shall I repeat the question? Perhaps, sir, Abdul Hamid has some issues with the power failure as it happens very often here in Pakistan. So let me contact him. And meanwhile, you can drop your questions here. We are only a few minutes away than the closure of the session. So once he comes back, we'll ask a few questions and then I'll bid uh, bye to everybody. Give me a second so that I may call him. Yes, he's facing power failure and he'll be back in a while. Meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, attendance form is very much shared here in the chat room. You can go through filling in the details, feedback and attendance form is shared thrice. And please be very mindful that every day we share attendance link nearly at end of the sessions. Because during the session, we want you to be focused on the speakers and the knowledge you receive from the inputs. It's useless if we keep discussing about attendance during the session. So always it's by end of the session. Sir, welcome back. You are on mute, sir. It's very, it's very, okay. So sir, question number one is, how can we increase our own confidence as teachers 
in front of the people who are perform better than us or who speak better than us okay i think for me what i actually uh, realize is come prepared if a teacher comes prepared i think the confidence comes naturally to him okay so that's the main thing uh, this is what i feel okay and then other thing is uh, practicing so it's not that you have prepared your lesson plan and you just go and uh, speak on that okay so bit a little bit give some time you can stand before mirror or you can speak to your friends okay so when you are new but i i am not talking about the experienced teacher because they are naturally confident but for the new teachers and novice teachers better that they should create a lesson plan okay they come prepared and then they should practice it before coming to the class right navigating with blindfold will not help them at all they need to yeah. practice yeah. second question is our assessment system doesn't allow learner autonomy to prevail how can we help it yeah i think now is a high time for us to move to the modern methods of teaching and learning okay? and then co collaborative and cooperative methods they are i think many teachers using we are using nowadays it's, it's a trend nowadays in the universities but then uh, we find some kind of you know reluctant from the student even some many students they still feel that teacher is sage and te teacher's ideas should be there and teacher should be speaking all the time so i always you know what happens i have the experience that i always use this co cooperative and collaborative learning so what happens some students that don't attend the class and then i ask you know, why why they are not here so they say sir you ask them questions and you give the activities so they don't like it okay? so it's a high time like uh, like now it should be at the institutional level even the, the institution they should uh, design the syllabus they should give the syllabus and they should uh, have a check and balance that whether teachers using it or not when it becomes routine then of course if teach like some teachers they are using only lecturing and some they are using so when it becomes routine and then there's check and balance then it can but then it's, it's high time now because uh, we need to move to the modern methods but if right. we really want a kind of you know a student who are going to you know uh, a kind of leaders in in the world right a uh, very important question again by ms mariam khan and she is asking can we say that activity based and task based learning are part of cnt she is talking about i think uh, john dewey's yes pbm I approach i think the cnt is approach okay so we can not actually uh, you know separate from cnt because they actually involve the students in uh, they actually uh, you know uh this the, the student the learner they are autonomous in these kind of activities in these kind of farms of uh, you know they they mostly say they are approach but i would say they are the method of clt okay? and they are related to clt because their aim is to make the learners active learner autonomous learner okay and then when they are learner they are working in groups they are working in a pbl or tbl they are actually talking to one another they are actually communicating okay? and uh when we talk about pbl they go outside they, even they they, they have more, more opportunity to discuss and talk in the natural environment in the natural setting so we cannot say they are uh, they can be connected they are direct if not the directly but they are the part of clt clt is a kind of you know i i always say that is more theoretical okay and clt says these things they when you read the rituals uh, jake and then uh, uh so and, and these people they actually talk about the same thing they are actually pbl and pbl and this type of thing right sir uh, the last question is attendees want you to rather request you to share some of the references they can study more about clt approach okay yeah i will definitely share it with you yeah. okay so uh, i'll be forwarding maybe, yeah okay, I'll, I'll be forwarding further right okay. so thank you very much sir please accept my sincere gratitude and appreciation for this very fruitful and productive session for ppdci attendees and for me as well and believe me listening to you today again i felt like going back to the classroom sitting in front of you and learning from you once again my heart of student again was activated so thank you very much it was thank really so a learning oriented session and i can really uh, understand you are always very busy but on our request you always spare time that's really very kind of you okay i would uh, say i'm really thankful to you because you have provided me this because i'm very lazy and you know but you force me and you ask me and actually feel like okay i i should do that okay 
otherwise so, these things yeah i i, I may, there are many invitations from other friends from the institution i go there but not very much but that this is like you are at home and you can do it so i'm thankful to you also because okay, so teachers I'm like sharing you things and i'm learning uh, from the people also teachers yeah. like you are asset to pakistan and we need more people like you so uh, please be in touch with us and keep teaching us we'll be growing definitely by your guidance okay thank you so much i think i should thank stop you. sharing it yes sir it's already stopped oh, oh, all right okay okay so, so thanks again okay and uh, you are welcome again because if you think that i i've given you uh, my time and these things so you are welcome always welcome for that so chat room is full of the gratitude and appreciation and the suggestion mm -hmm. and the guideline which you have given i would like mm -hmm. ppdci team to save this chat and we'll share it with sir and sir if you can spare some time you can go through this and you'll mm -hmm. see and you'll find out how happy the participants are to listen and to learn from you oh, thank so you thank so you very much thanks. Yes, thanks to the participants also. I'm really, you know, grateful to them that they listen to me and they spare some time to listen to them. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, so, uh, dear trainees, we come to the end of day three of PPDCI second boot camp and see this is how we experience a transformation every year. Whenever we run our boot camp, we have seasoned speakers with us. And these speakers really come in our lives as the changing agents and their medal touch is all enough to change our approaches and our thinking patterns and our pedagogical skills. Thank you so very much for joining us. See you back tomorrow right at the same time from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. as per Pakistan Standard Time. I'm grateful to the attendees who have joined us from other part of the world where it's just a morning or maybe it's a midnight. I'm very happy to see that PPDCI is growing internationally. So thank you very much. Let's keep growing and keep learning together. Happy learning, everyone. Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz. PPDCI team, the chat is to be saved. I yet have not ended the meeting just for the sake that you save the chat first and then we'll end the meeting. Nice to see Allah Hafiz in the chat room. It's really good. Yes, saved it. All right, okay, so you can leave the meeting, leave a note, uh, a kind of exit ticket for us, and then you can leave the meeting. Meanwhile, PPDCI team is trying to save the chat because this is to be shared with the trainers further. <laughs>